thinking like Archimedes. The Archimedes principle is usually taught in schools by first describing how some objects float while others sink and then defining terms like apparent mass and real mass, density, volume, which unfortunately tend to confuse children who find these definitions to be too abstract for them to connect to. Is it possible that when we ask children whether something will float or sink, they can actually think this through? Indeed, as this research paper describes, there was a true experience here where children of grade 6 in Rajghat Besan School, Varanasi, India, actually thought this through for themselves. They were given some water and some common everyday fruits and vegetables like a coconut, a pineapple, a potato, a cucumber, a watermelon, a mango, a sweet lime and so on and they had to first even before seeing whether it floats or sink they had to first sit in small groups and make their predictions and reasons for their predictions before they actually verified this. This was because the pedagogy employed was called proof, predict, reason out, observe and verify. So until they wrote out the reason for the prediction that they had made, they did not step out to actually conduct the experiment. When they discussed in small groups, sometimes their discussion made one or two of them change their prediction and their reason. This was then followed by them actually going out and verifying with buckets of water and the fruits and vegetables whether what they had predicted was indeed true. They were very surprised to find that a large coconut floated and a little sweet lime bobbed up and down. Even a massive pineapple was only half submerged. So with excited discussion, they made some rules and then removed those rules and again made a new rule and again eliminated it. All this they came back and summarized in this tabular form where they said we made a rule but this is what we expected and yet this is what we found. Naturally, this resulted in many of them revisiting their former assumptions and finally they realized they could not come up with just one rule. Before proceeding further, the teacher went on to explain that they must have seen how a nail sinks but a huge ship floats. They got intrigued by this and further intrigued when she showed them that fat people, they must have noticed, swim more easily than do thin people. Now the teacher went on to narrate the story of Archimedes and how he had been posed a difficult puzzle by the king who wanted to know whether the gold crown made for him by his goldsmith was indeed of pure gold or whether the goldsmith had cheated him of some of the gold. Archimedes was given an even tougher proposition by the king stating that the crown should not be damaged in any way. And one fine day, when Archimedes was having his bath, he noticed that he displaced some water and that made him excitedly run out saying, I have found it, I have found it, Eureka. Before the teacher told the class what he had found, she gave the class a choice. Would any of you like to figure this out for yourselves? Seven students rose and left the class saying they would like to figure this out for themselves. The teacher therefore continued the lesson with the students who chose to remain behind and listen to her explanation. Starting with the game which children love known as tug of war, the teacher asked students what usually happens in this game? Immediately, children responded that the team which pulls stronger wins. So the teacher agreed and said yes, when there are two opposing forces, the movement is always in the direction of the stronger force. The children connected to this everyday example very easily. The teacher followed this with a diagram like this and showed 
that just as in the horizontal direction, movement is always in the direction of the stronger force, the same law holds also in the vertical direction, just like the game of tug of war. Then she showed a ball immersed in water on the blackboard and asked which is the force pulling the ball down. All the students said, wait. To explain the opposite force, the teacher said, the ball tries to push aside some water in order, in order to get space and this pushed aside water gets angry and it says you pushed me I'll push you and there you have an upward force so now again you have two opposing forces in the vertical direction and depending upon which force is stronger an object either sinks or floats the class ended and the teacher now stepped out to meet the seven students. Uh, my name is Rudra. Rudra. Ishita. Ishita. Chandrasekhar. Chandrasekhar. Athar. Athar. Tanupriya. Tanupriya. Satyam. Satyam. Akash. Akash. I told us a story about Archimedes. Okay. Uh, the story was something like this. Yeah. Uh, there was a um, very intelligent person. Mm. Uh, his name was Archimedes. Once a king hmm. uh, uh, gave some gold to a goldsmith yes. and he asked him to make a crown yes. of the gold he has given. Yes. So he made the crown, the goldsmith made the crown. So when he came back uh, showing, uh, he told the crown. Uh, gave showed, the crown. Gave yeah. the crown. So, uh, so he thought, the king thought that I think something is, uh, some, it's not gold, it's not to totally Pure gold. gold. Pure gold. So he went to uh, Archimedes mm -hmm. and, Archimed and then you stopped there. What did Archimedes, how, uh, he said that uh, uh, you have to find is there any other substance than gold. Okay. Uh, so you then you said uh, those who want to. Uh, so I stopped over there. Yeah. Did I say anything more? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, he told us one day Archimedes was bathing in a big bathtub and uh, when he was bathing. Uh, so the water. Uh, the uh, space that is uh, that is body occupied, uh, the water from it came mm -hmm. out. So uh, he thought something and he ran uh, like without uh, <laughs> any the clothes. Whole, uh, uh, whole city. Because he got excited. He got excited. Okay. One by one, what did you think when you came out? What was your mind saying? One by one, let him say first. Uh, the mind. Uh, my mind was saying that the uh, you see uh, you have you have uh, tell us about that uh, 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 how the how the how a, a nail uh, sinks uh. and 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 how but uh, why does the ship, ship float? float? The it is because the the uh, because the ship surface is flat. So the uh, in that the uh, the uh, water can't go inside, hmm. so the uh, it can't sink. Hmm. And in the nail, uh, there is a, a pattern. Hmm. And the uh, inside that, uh, the the water is going in the gaps. Hmm. So the so the inside in that gap, the water is going. So then the uh, nail is floating. You tell me, what was your mind thinking? Um, uh, the Louder. <coughs> the ship doesn't uh, sink because uh, the surface of it is made of wood, mm. and I think uh, wood doesn't uh, like sink. Uh, but uh, metal things, the uh, metal is inside the wood. Okay. Like, it is covered by the wood, and uh, in the nail, the uh, uh, whole thing is of metal, and uh, that is why. So your mind was also thinking about the ship and the nail when you came out of the class? You were not thinking about the gold crown or the gold? Uh, I was thinking about that also, uh, but I didn't like focus on it. Okay, okay, you. I understood that the big ob objects, mm. they can um, float in water mm. because they occupy a lot of space. Okay, and so? And so the, and I understood that the um, Archimedes mm. uh, 
uh, when he was taking a bath, he was so excited because hmm. he understood that what is problem in the crown. How did he understand? What did he understand? See, because crown was floating. Maybe. Maybe crown was floating. So from that, what did he understand? That it is not gold because if there was the gold, then it sinks. I see. How do you know that gold sinks? See, because it is very heavy and the go uh, and gold it is not very enormous. Ah. So are you saying that heavy things they don't sink if they are enormous? Are you yes. saying that? So ship is enormous but heavy, so it does not sink. Like we did experiments, so there was a big coconut which was very heavy, but it didn't sink. Ah, okay, okay. Yes. What did you say? What did you think? Mm -hmm. I thought uh, that the Archimedes mm -hmm. would know that the gold would sink in the water, mm -hmm. or if the if the gold crown uh, mm -hmm. floated, there is something mixed in the mm -hmm. crown. What made you think that? Uh, because. Uh, You think what made you think that? I'll come back to you. Yeah. Actually, the answer which Athar told mm. was uh, we both uh, yes. said one by one words came to our mind. We started saying the words and to, uh, together we made uh, the sentence. But gradually, I started. Uh, I left that answer which uh, I, Athar and I made, mm. and I gradually thought uh, about the gold. Mm. About the gold uh, means uh, so. So I. I'll not uh, tell the answer now, which we found out. Find out. I'll uh, ask Akash to tell that in his chance. It's okay. You tell me what your mind was saying. How were you thinking? Akash can tell, but you tell me what was your mind thinking after coming out of the class. What were you thinking in your mind? The first, I was focused on the ship. Ah. Uh, after some time, I thought uh, I uh, told everyone, "Why are we uh, talking about the ship?" Because uh, Question is uh, on gold. Ah. Then we started, uh, you know, putting our brains on. Nice, nice. Topic. So all of you discussed together. Yes. All of you. Yes. Sir. Okay. Tell me, what did you my think? My brain is, my brain was saying, saying that uh, if the gold, the gold can sink, mm. but why ship is can, uh, ship can't sink? Mm. Then I uh, no understood. Thought about it. Uh, I was trying that. Then I understood that. Uh, uh, ship has uh, surface and shape. Mm. That's why I think thought that. And when you were uh, you was telling a story that that fat man has um, he can't know how to swim, but he, he can swim uh, because fat person can swim. Is so easy. Mm. Mm. Then uh, he that much what he occupies. Mm. That much what is his fault. And uh, like that only shape, that much he was occupied and there was the flowing out of it and like that thing. Okay, okay. Yes, Akash? So, my brain was going into the means first. Uh, I think the Archimedes, uh, first, he took the, first uh, I think he was taking the gold and he was putting uh, the gold from certain height to the bucket of, uh, to a bucket of water. Then he saw how much water is coming out. So uh, when he saw that that much water is coming out, he can understand what uh, how much heavy that gold is. After that, uh, after that amount, he, he took out the gold and he put the gold crown. After that, he put the gold crown uh, from the same height and he uh, 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 put it uh, and he uh, make it fill off from that height. And when it went to the uh, uh, water. water bucket, then uh, uh, he means he could understand how much water has come out. Hmm. If it is uh, le less than the, if it is less than the water which came out of the gold, mm -hmm. that means the uh, that uh, the goldsmith has not used the gold, uh, the pure gold. gold, pure gold, hmm. and if the amount of water comes out as the hmm. same. And at the same amount, that uh, then the Archimedes will understand mm -hmm. that uh, the. The crown is pure. So, uh, does it matter how much gold he takes in the first step? Any amount of gold he can take? No. Uh, how much should he take? He, he, needs to he take, should take. He should take only that amount of gold which is given to the goldsmith. Ah.
Yes. Uh, we found out the answer like first Athar made the base. Okay, like um, base of if uh, like we are creating a building. So he made the base and then everyone started you know creating the base mm -hmm. more stronger. Then I and Akash thought, so uh, Akash and I thought, uh, let's go more deeper and f find the building stock. Mm -hmm. So uh, we thought, uh, thought and thought. I was saying something and he was saying. At last, we both joined two sentences and the answer was it. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. So here is an instance of how, when children were allowed to experience and think before they were actually taught definitions, it proved to be very effective. Are we missing such an opportunity to get our students to think things through? Would you like to try this out in your class? Thank you.